Hi guys, my name is Lama, and today I'm going to start a three-part series looking at five different tips for each of the roles that you might be fulfilling in a hardcore dungeon to help you improve your performance while leveling with others in a dungeon environment. Now, I decided to do this because recently I've been getting back into hardcore and I've seen a lot of really skilled players and a lot of players who Honestly, if they weren't in the groups that they were in or grossly overleveling the dungeons, then they probably wouldn't have made it past that dungeon run. Now, obviously, everybody wants to avoid dying in the hardcore challenge because that is not going to be how you get to level 60. And as a result, if there are ways that you can improve, then that is something that you should probably strive for. There is no reason why any given person can't make it to level 60, and hopefully with guides like this, it should help you to be able to get there on the character you're doing currently, or hopefully if you've recently succumbed to making any of these mistakes, it might help you to learn and develop in the future going forward. Now, this episode is going to be about tanking, however I will be producing the healer and DPS videos later, so consider subscribing to the channel so that you can be made aware of when those release. But without further ado, let's dive into it with tip number one for the tanks. Now having said tip number one, I probably should specify that these five tips are not exhaustive. There are probably hundreds of things that I have to say for each one of these roles in ways that which majority of people can improve. And they are also not in any kind of order in regards to their importance. You should absolutely work to develop yourself in all of these regards, even if it's something you think that you've already got covered. But with that being said, the first thing that you are going to want to do is learn how to properly LOS pull or even just LOS spells in general as a tank. Now LOSing or line of sight is the preferred method for making a pull that may otherwise be a difficult pull to correctly achieve. By LOS pulling what you're going to want to do is engage a mob in combat from range and then use some form of structure that actually counts as a structure for LOS purposes in order to be able to bring caster mobs into the range where you actually want to be able to fight them. Now, the reason that you're going to want to do this is because for the most part, you should never be engaging mobs where they are originally located. That is a danger zone. The zone that you are currently located, by nature of the fact that you are located there and not in combat, is inherently a safe zone, or at least safer than the one that you would otherwise be fighting the mobs. So by using something such as a thrown weapon or a moonfire or whatever your class and spec has the capacity to do, in order to be able to aggro the mobs and then use a wall or a pillar to be able to prevent that mob from casting or using ranged attacks on you, you will be able to make that mob come to you into your safe zone, allowing you to be able to kill it in an environment that is considerably safer. Now it is worth mentioning that quite often you will find that your DPS get in the way of this by either aggroing the mobs or your healer could heal you when it is not required and gain aggro and that would then potentially mess this up and you would have to adapt on the fly. Hopefully your healers and your DPS won't do that or would have the capacity to be able to complete the LOS portion of the pull for you if they were to do that in error. But do be aware that that is something that can happen, something that you will need to be aware of. So don't simply just switch off until the mob arrives. You do want to be aware of what's going on around you. Next up, I want to talk about using a threat meter. Now, a lot of people use things like threat-based nameplates and things like that to understand that they have aggro and a mob, and that is excellent. However, what this doesn't tell you is the actual numerical values of threat that you have against the target. Sometimes you will have percentage values and things like that, which are certainly helpful, but an actual numerical value cannot be beaten for being able to visualize the amount of threat that you're generating with any given ability or just how far of a lead you have or the next person on the threat meter as well as also knowing who that person is so that then you can adapt the situation. For example, if you have three targets that are currently all engaged in combat and all currently attacking you and you know that you have a 1000 aggro lead at a low level on two of them and only a 100 aggro lead on the third, you'll know that you want to go and attack that third target. Similarly, if you had say a 500 point lead on two targets, but one of them was over the healer and the other one was over a wind fury shaman, you'll know that you're probably going to want to generate against the one that is at risk to the wind fury shaman as he is more likely to get a proc that just generates a massive amount of aggro very instantaneously whereas priests tend to be considerably more consistent when it comes to their generation of aggro. 
What this also allows for is the capacity to get an understanding of how much threat you're generating with any given ability. So then you can try and understand your priority system or what is the best action to take in any given situation for the benefits beyond threat, but while also generating the threat that you require against any given target. For example, until I started using a threat meter, I did not realize the incredible significance of a revenge proc getting a critical damage roll in regards to the threat generation and how that compared to a sunder. I actually had an experience where generating one crit with a revenge proc actually generated as much threat as three sunder armors normally does. Obviously meaning then that I know going forward that in that clutch situation while I can't rely on crits, revenge would always end up being a considerable benefit over sunder armor for threat generation while obviously lacking in comparison in regards to the damage output and secondary effects. But that is something then to consider as to which button I would prioritize in any given situation. Now, third thing to talk about that I've sort of alluded to in that regard, this may seem rather simple. I suppose all of these could potentially seem like simple and obvious things, but they're only obvious once you actually realize them. However, what you are going to want to do is ensure that when you are doing dungeons, particularly at low level, which this guide is aiming towards to be able to get people going in their hardcore experience, you are going to want to generate plenty of threat across every single target in a given pack. You cannot rely on having your teammates only generate threat against the target that you wish to generate threat against yourself. People just aren't good enough to be able to secure that as a guarantee, as well as a lot of classes and a lot of actions being able to generate threat across multiple targets, whether their person is playing correctly or not. A good example of this being healers, while they don't generally generate a considerable amount of threat, all healing aggro is against all targets that are currently engaged in combat. So you will lose out to that healer eventually if you do not have your targets. Similarly, going back to the previous example that I have given, if you are generating against a single target, you aren't going to be aware of how much of a threat lead or a threat deficit you have on other targets, meaning that you are going to want to constantly be tabbing from one to the next. Not least of which, of course, you are going to want to be doing this for other reasons as well, such as being able to kick spells or being able to ensure that certain debuffs stay up on targets. Now, I know that a lot of people don't do this because they have a lot of difficulty with regards to generating aggro across multiple targets, and that is something that would need to be worked upon. But one thing that might be able to help you with that is tip number four in regards to using a good amount of understanding in pooling resources. Now, your resource, be it rage, be it mana or anything else, is something that you are going to want to be able to manage effectively in order to be able to get a head start in regards to generating threat against multiple targets in a pack. Now, in Classic, with the exception of Paladin, you are going to have Rage be your primary resource when it comes to generating threat. And you will need to get an understanding of when you want to use your Rage, what you want to use your Rage on, and when you're actually better off pooling it. Now, there's a lot of factors to consider here, but if you have followed the previous advice in regards to getting a threat meter you'll be able to tell that if you have currently got one mob remaining and it's already at half health and you have an absolutely massive threat generation lead you don't need to press any more buttons against that mob your sunder armors don't do any extra damage it's probably already got its five stacks on it or a sufficient amount for the amount of health that it has left and you can just keep using your white autos to be able to generate more rage, allowing you then to go into the next pack straight after with enough rage to already get a sunder up on every target in the pack. Similarly, it also helps in the opposite situation whereby you think that you might want to start pulling rage, but you actually realize that you don't actually have the big enough threat lead to be able to pull that off. So you'll know then that you are going to need to spend it. Now, the final point that I want to talk about in this video, leading nicely on from talking about managing your resources, is also managing the resources of your teammates, most notably keeping an eye on your healer's mana. Now, I know a lot of people get overly excited doing their dungeons, just want to keep going, keep pulling from one to the next, because that's what Retail WoW has taught people before moving over into hardcore. However, you are going to want to make sure that everyone is in a capacity to do so with regards to the resources they have available to them. The most important being the mana pool reserves of your healer. Now, 
a lot of people's UIs aren't configured in such a manner where that is easily accessed information, and I highly recommend if you're tanking dungeons that you adapt this. Now you will notice on my screen that I actually have everybody's unit frames very centralized and with a lot of information present to me within my UI, meaning that at any given moment I can see whether people have their energy reserves or not, be it mana, rage, or energy. Now, beyond this, I currently don't have it working because it seems to have just stopped working since the release of Season, release of, season of Discovery. But I do also normally have a weak aura that specifically looks for healers within my group and shouts at me if they are low on mana. Now, there is a degree of responsibility in regards to the healer to be also making sure that you are aware of this. However, given that you are the one that's pulling, it really lies on you to be able to keep an eye on this and understand whether your group is ready for you to pull. As the tank, you are essentially the leader and primary operative of the party. Everyone else is there to help you as opposed to be able to do things for you. So you really have to be in charge of making these decisions. Now, I did have a further short list of about another 15 things that I would like to talk about in regards to helping you tank better in the hardcore environment. And if that is something that you'd like to see, let me know down below. Or if you'd like a longer form thing going more into depth in regards to any one of these tips that I have given in this video today, let me know that too, because that is something that I considered, given that I have given a very shallow overview on all of these issues brought up today. But hopefully you did find it helpful. And if you did, let me know that too. But for now, guys, that's all I have to say in this video. And I hope that these tips help keep you alive in your hardcore challenge. And I hope to see you later. See you in the next one.